Please welcome singers Adina Howard and Leela James. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. Hey, Hello. You. All this beautiful black Hi. girl magic. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Y'all are both. Y'all are both so talented and 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 unique and memorable. So uh, I'm I'm glad to have you here. Are y'all ready for the spring and to get out of this cold darkness that we've just been going through? You know what? <laughs> for me, this hasn't stopped anything for me. At the end of the day, you know, this is just a, a speed bump in the road. And it's just a process. But I'm a homebody, that, and and I actually started wearing masks before they became mandatory. So it doesn't bother me at all. Really? So mm -hmm. before this all happened, went down? Yeah, because I would be on a plane and I'm sure, you know, ladies, you know this, we'll be on a plane and you hear somebody coughing and sneezing, hacking. And I've had, I've sat next to enough people not covering their mouths when they would cough and I would have to say something. I said, you know what? So to keep me from having to open my mouth, <laughs> I'll just wear a mask. And I just started doing it. Okay, you've been ahead of the game. All right. Thank you. So it's Women's History Month, and we're definitely celebrating Women's History Month. I want to know, and I, was, I want to start with you, Lila. What what women inspired your career? Oh, so many. Um, I'm I'm inspired by Tina Turner. I'm inspired by Aretha Franklin. You know, I just love the fact that so many of our ancestors paved the way. You know what I mean for us as women. Um, to even be here today doing the things that we do. And I, I just love our, our rich history. And specifically, again, you know, when I think of Aretha Franklin, her being the queen of soul, you know, I'm just like, she embodied Black music. Mm -hmm. She just embodied and she represented everything that was soulful and is still soulful. So um I'm inspired by women like that. So I continue to try to make soul music myself and embody everything that is black. And, you know, I think um, hopefully i make my ancestors proud. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Adina, how about yourself? Who inspired oh you? Oh my gosh, things? mine is such an opposite list. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vanity Six, Madonna, Climax. Um, the women that were sassy, the women that had that, you know, that, that swag for me was that move that moved me. Women that really just stood the ground and made the statement that this is who I am and hear me. Whether you like it or not, you're gonna see me and you're gonna hear me. And those are the women that I gravitated to when I was younger and inspired me. I, I love it. And I love that you, although you two come from two different like inspiration. We need all that. It's all necessary. We're not a monolith. Women are not black women are not a monolith. And we're not all one thing. That's and right. we can be spiritual Absolutely. and soulful and sexy and mm -hmm. all like powerful. it is all that. And powerful. Exactly. Absolutely. So I want to get your thoughts on the Grammys being last weekend and Beyonce and Megan Thee Stallion broke records with their historic wins. What is the vetting process like? Is is the vetting process for the awards, is it fair for black artists? Or what are your thoughts? There's been a lot of criticisms of the Grammys as of late. Late, I'm gonna let you take it. <laughs> no, you take okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I don't even know how to even answer that question because I've not, like when I first started in the industry, um, I went maybe a handful of times and, and then it just got boring for me. And it's really what, from what I can remember, it's more of, it's all about politics and making sure your team is making sure they get certain people to vote for you to make sure you're able to win the award. So it's just, it's a whole process that at the end of the day, it really doesn't move me because for me personally, I've not won any awards on that level. And I really don't need that type of thing to validate my gift, my talent, and, and the people that appreciate what I do. So that's something that I can't even really speak on because I don't care. <laughs> it's like that to me, it's just a false like sense of, you know, you made it. Beyonce didn't need it, but it's great to have, of course, to have those things on your shelves. But, you know, whether she won or not, she's still a beast. That's true. And yeah. And Lila, I think it's just a, it's like a means to an end, you know, for artists, you know, it's a larger platform. Um, so for black artists, it's always, you know, it's a good look in a sense if you get an award, but it's not the end all be all, you know, I feel like 
anytime Marvin Gaye didn't receive a Grammy in his career, it's hard for me to just feel like, oh, the Grammys are, they represent what is, is again, all knowing. So, I mean, I think it's a blessing that um, people uh, are celebrated and we should celebrate one another. And I think it's, uh, you know, amazing. Salute to the artists that get Grammys, but to all the artists that don't have Grammys, that, that doesn't define who you are either. So um, I think it's a it's a great thing to celebrate, but it's not the end all be all. Lila, speaking of artists that, that have won Grammys, you, you recently celebrated your friend Lettucey, who is also amazing for her yeah. Grammy win over the weekend. So I know they're not the end all be all, but they do lead to, you know, I mean, there's an argument to be made how it can help your, your career. So absolutely, that it's it's a great platform. As I said, it's a great platform and it can be a means to into expanding your brand and expanding, exposing yourself to a larger audience. So I'm, I mean, again, I salute the artists that have won Grammys and I'm so, so, so proud of my friends, you know, um, and happy for them because we work hard. She worked hard for many, many years and didn't even get a Grammy, you know? Um, and many of us, including myself, we've been in this game for a long time, like Adina said, and people haven't gotten Grammys and or nominations. So, you know, to even, it's amazing um, to think, you know, uh, to reference Marvin Gaye again, that he didn't get a Grammy in his career, but um, it happens. Um, um, and for the ones, again, that have, it's also still, it, that happens as well, and that's great. And the realty is half the times, some of the most talented artists that deserve to not only have one can't even get invited to the damn show. Yeah, they don't even have a seat at the dead gold table. <laughs> they yeah. don't. Good That's good thing for Soul Train Awards, baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I've said it before, and I, I just think that they've showed us who they are. And by they, I mean mainstream. And mm-hmm. yeah, it'd be great to get them. But if they're going to keep playing the game, you know, we have some fantastic award shows. I've always had fun at the BET Awards, the Soul Train Awards. The Lady of Soul, the Image Awards, like we need to just go and and, and go where we we oh, we're so just so so Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, for me, we don't need them to validate our gifts and talents. We can, you know, we can celebrate ourselves amongst ourselves. I, I just think that um, there are moments where we just depend way too much on them to give us our shine. When at the end of the day, we can do that ourselves. Not the word. And speaking of words, Adina, you started posting inspirational videos a few weeks ago, in, a few weeks into the pandemic. So mm-hmm. uh, let's take a look. Because me and my loved ones are healthy. I am grateful because during this national health crisis, I am at peace in spite of. I'm grateful because all of my needs are continuously being met in this hour. I am grateful because I am loved. People have no idea how important it is to not only be loved, but to recognize that you are loved. And I recognize that I'm loved. Also, my fifth one, growth. I'm so grateful that in this time of timeout, I am growing. Your turn. Very nice. How did that help your, your world change? Or did it? I hear people say these things when they, when they repeat you know, positive affirmations, they see clear changes in their lives. I'm grateful every day. One of the things that I say is I'm I'm blessed and marinated in divine favor. And people don't even understand that when I say that I'm oh so serious, it sounds cute when I say it and people laugh and hee hee. But when I say I am marinated in divine favor, baby, I am marinated down to the marrow. And so for me, <laughs> it's just, I live my life based on gratitude because you just never know when it's going to be taken away from you. I lost a, um, a loved one. Uh, during 2020, February of 2020. And I just recognize that you just can't take anyone or anything for granted because you just never know. That's right. I think we've uh, learned, well, some of us have learned some lessons during this past year and were humbled and have been taught to appreciate things that we probably just, again, took for granted. Absolutely. When's the last time you were able to hug your mom or see your mom? it's been almost a year and a half for me. So I think those yeah. are some, some good words. Leela, um, most concert tours came to a halt last yeah. year. Was that really challenging for you? Um, I can imagine that just for an artist. Where you just Absolutely. Have- Absolutely. A, a large part of my um, career has been based on touring and, 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 you know, the fact that 
we weren't able to do that or not able, I should say, to do that um, the way that we been able to as artists in the past. It's been challenging um, for obviously for obvious reasons, um, but also for me, I'm, I'm the type of artist, I like to connect with the people and feel the people and the energy and get out. And it's a great way to expand um, on your, your musical base. And so when you're unable to really touch the people that way and bring the music to them, it, you feel you feel a little weird. So it's been it's been different. It's definitely been different. And I miss going out on the road. I miss doing um, shows before me. But, you know, we just got to do what we got to do um, until we get past this storm, you know, because at the end of the day, I prefer my health and my safety over anything anyway, because if we did and gone, ain't nobody going to be on nobody's stage. That part. <laughs> did it feel at one point to both of you like, this may not end. I don't know when it's going to end. It seemed like for a long time, the light at the end of the tunnel seemed really far away and really dim. And like, are we ever going to be able to, to live life like we used to? I don't know. I don't think we'll ever be able to go back to what it was. Um, but we just have to continue to try to move forward as best as we possibly can. But I think the days of, of old are, are just that, that, you know, those days are gone. I'm like Adina. I, I, I'm masked up anyway, so mm -hmm. I will be continuing to mask up, you know, moving forward throughout life. I'm going to make sure my kids wear their masks. So for us, it's going to be a, di it's a different world. It's already a different world. So um, I just think we just got to now adjust our lives to what this new world is. So I want to share some of the positive comments. I just, I just believe we need to do that. When we hear some positive things about someone, we got to share it. Uh, YouTube comments. Uh, Sydney, I agree with you, Sydney. So Adina Howard isn't going to ever age. Drop the picture. <laughs> and that's what, when you showed your, your skin is just, your, your skin looks amazing. Both y'all look great. So there's no aging going on here. Uh, Therese says, I remember Adina had that freak song back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Tisha says, Leela be singing her face off. Yes, she does. That says, Leela's hair is always gorgeous. And Mike says, speak, Adina. Awards don't equate someone's talent so there's a lot of there's a whole bunch of chats like a whole bunch of messages in the chat for you they're definitely here for you uh adina did the pandemic slow down your your creative process no or, you know, it didn't slow down it it honestly at the end of the day did not disrupt my life at all really? like this is just one on my homebody and because i am always out in the public when it comes to working and constantly meeting people and whatnot every time i would come home off the road i would go back into my cave um, I'm a Scorpio and I always tell people, if you know what a scorpion, if you actually look at a scorpion, the only time you really see them was when they're going out to handle their business. And when the business is done, they go back into their little hole. And that is me all day. I just, it just didn't really honestly stop anything. Um, when I say favor, I mean favor. Financially, been able to, you know, handle the bills still. Um, needs are always met. Um, you know, still got to get, got to love on my family because my mom, my mother lives in Arizona. Mm. So she would drive to Vegas and she would stay with me and go visit, you know, me and my sisters. And so it really, honestly, I think it, I was able to see my mother more when the pandemic happened, you know, during the process. And of course we're still going through the process. Mm. Um, but I was able to see her more because she was in Arizona by herself. And so she wanted to be near her babies as much as she could. So she has grandbabies in Vegas. She has me and two of my other sisters um, that live in Vegas. And so she just gets to do a little bit more traveling. I'm talking to Adina Howard and Leela James about their fantastic careers and just life and just catching up. Now, uh, Leela, early on in your career, you performed with the uh, Roots and opened for Black Eyed Peas and Macy Gray. You scored a hit with the, the song Music growing up. So who are some of the artists that, you know, influence your soulful sound? Because that's all everyone says. They're like, she's so soulful. She's so soulful. So who are your influences? Oh, I mean, you know, again, Aretha Franklin, Gladys mm -hmm. Knight, Al Green, um, Tina Turner, Betty Wright. I love folks that sang with rich, rich, fat, you know, thick voices. And Shirley Caesar, um, Bobby Womack. I can just go on. Sam Cooke. <laughs> A lot of the older greats, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, like, you know, soul artists. And even though you like, you look so, I mean, this is with all black women, but you look so young and then you have this like old soul, like this rich old soul and soulfulness about you. 
You know? Yeah. Like, um, I attribute that to the food I eat. <laughs> are you vegan? I eat a lot of soul food. I eat oh, a lot okay. of soul food. <laughs> and um, no, but I, I've been told that I just feel like the ancestors come through me and, you know, God gave me whatever this is, this gift, and I just use it as best as possible. Um, and it just happened to be extremely soulful. <laughs> Right. And rooted in all of that. It's just rooted in the soul, definitely. Okay. And Adina, you hit the scene in the mid-90s with your album, Do You Want to Ride? And the hit single, Freak Like Me, which we were all dancing nasty to. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I can't believe you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we, we were. I mean, recently celebrated 25 years. So let's take a look at this. Still the jam, still. That's so, so crazy. Was the fan frenzy and the popularity of that song, was it overwhelming at that time? Because it just like, it it just blew up. I had so, I, you know, it's so interesting. Someone just asked me that the other day and I had to focus on work. Like I couldn't even celebrate my success because no sooner than it hit the charts and it started making movement, I had to just get prepared for tours. I had to, I had to go to work. So all of that, everybody around me got to celebrate it, but I had to stay focused and like, you know what, let's, let's not put the heads in the clouds and, and, you know, celebrate because you got a job to do. And that's hitting that stage every night and being on time and making sure you remember lyrics and Leela, I know you know this, you know, making sure you don't forget not nail lyric or melody. Cause I have done that multiple <laughs> times on stage in my two plus decades. So it's like, wait, what was that lyric? What was that word? So it's just, I had to focus. I didn't even, I didn't get to celebrate. So I couldn't even tell you, I would see the people around me and I would, you know, embrace them. But the magnitude of my success never ever even to the date has not dawned on me i'm so glad we have this platform foxel to to talk to both of you ladies because perception is everything right and i mm -hmm. read the perception of you is freak like me she's out there she's partying she's kicking it and they believe the songs that you're singing are you it just you just talk like that's just your life right you live what the music video is all the time but then you're on here you're just so grounded and and spiritual and and just you know maybe i'm 47 well <laughs> Uh, uh, I feel you. Let, me let me say this though. So before Adina Howard, um, I was doing everything in my song. After Adina Howard, I had to focus on work and, and, and keep it strictly professional. Okay. So, so all of that, it was like, I got all of my plan before, you, you know, out of the way. Okay. So you lived it, but just, just prior, just a lot of, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we exactly. have another conversation. We have another comment on YouTube. Janet said, I used to get in trouble singing Freak Like Me because I was a kid. My mama was calling me fast. Oh, ooh, I remember that <laughs> word. Oh, I remember that word. My mother made sure we weren't fast. <laughs> <laughs> Kept us in church on Sundays. The bus picked us up even if we, she wasn't going. And Bible study on Wednesdays, yes. Oh. We, she made sure we were good girls. She would tell us that. You still good girls? Yes, mama, we still good girls. <laughs> Now, Lila, you've given your fans a taste of, of rock, funk, hip hop, soul, a little bit of everything over the years. Now you have a new single called Complicated. So let's take a look. So the video giving baby boy vibes. Was that the concept? Was that the concept you're going for? Baby boy? Oh, all day. Yeah. We were paying out to John Singleton and his movie, Baby Boy. This is a 20 year anniversary of that movie coming out. And, you know, John Singleton was from L.A. I'm from L.A. Um, he also um, was the first and the youngest um, African-American director to be awarded. So as a film director. And I thought it was just a perfect way we released it last month, which was Black History Month, but we all know that you know our history is all year. Mm -hmm. But it just felt fitting to release the um, single and the um, video, you know, paying homage to one of ours at that time, and then just pushing the a whole concept of how 
um, the relationships in our in our communities are so complicated. I mean, when you think of that movie, Baby Boy, the, the relationship between the mother, you know, trying to raise a son by herself as a single mother, and then he has his baby mamas and he has a friend who's who's trying to get out of the streets, and, but at the same time, the streets keeps pulling them back in. So it was all these, you know, dynamic, complicated relationships that we see when you grow up in pretty much the hood, you see those for real. And it was just a great way to kind of tap into my roots and show where we come from. Okay. <laughs> I have another question for both of you, especially Adina, I know, you know, we, we joked around a little bit about your song, Freak Like Me, but you know, since the Grammys, Cardi B, and Megan getting really criticized and, and dragged for being overly sexual with their music. What, what do y'all think about that? Because, it's you know. Of course. It's par for the course. Okay. It's just something that's gonna happen. Um, there's, you know, we all know that there's a double standard when it comes to women and then being women of color, there's, that's a whole nother to do. Uh, but it's just, it just comes with the territory. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's. For me, I'm a what if person. Like, I can't. One of the things that I have gotten to a space in my life where if I can't control it, then it's a moot point for me. And so I, I can't control what people think about me. I can't control what people say about me, but I can control my responses to that. And so at the end of the day, it's like, who cares? You know, live your life, do what you do be successful, be profitable, have fun, and, you know, just make sure you're not hurting anybody. You know, that's, that's where I'm at with it. And it's, I feel like they're trying to make them like the poster children for just inappropriateness and just being. Oh, I yeah. yeah and I, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's so interesting. I find it so interesting at times, you know, I, I'm mm. kind of like a Dean, I, you know, I, I raised my children and, you know, that's my responsibility. So, you know, I don't leave that to society. But what I will say, it's, it's always um, funny to me that um, we can have people to publicly say, just grab them by the pussy. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Right. But we're up in arms with everything else. It's just, it's always amazing to me, you know, this, the, the stuff that other people can get away with, I should say. And can do, and okay. and and I just we, I just feel like sometimes we don't hear, um, you know, the same anger and 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 being so upset with this, that, and the other, um, with you know other things. I'll just leave it at that. No, I'll I'll say it. It's very much a double standard with black women and their sexuality. Black women and their sexuality. It's always wanted. It, it's cheapened. It's disgusting. It's hood. It's it's slutty. And it's white vulgar, women do it. It's ratchet. It's ratchet. And we do oh, it to yeah. ourselves. We we judge ourselves as well. And we need to stop doing that ourselves because we don't keep that same energy for the white folks when they do that. It's sens It's sexy, right? It's sexy. Right. Right. I, I mean, I, I you know, again, I there was a what did Madonna and 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 Christina or what was that girl Brittany. Didn't they Brilliant. kiss? Yeah. Didn't they kiss or something? Okay. Well, a whole tongue kiss on stage, but no one said that was affecting their children in any way. But when Cardi and Megan are are, are are twerking or whatever, it's they've they've ruined society. They're just jealous because they can't twerk. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think clearly, there's is. something that's it's like whatever, and I, I said this earlier, whatever you don't like about somebody else more often than not. It's something that you have within you. You just don't notice it. You know, you're so focused on the sliver in somebody else's eye that you don't see the plank in yours. It's like, come on, okay. you know, focus on making yourself better. If there's something that you don't like, make sure it's not the same characteristic that you have in yourself. Because how do you recognize that if it's not in you? That's right. Yeah, I think that's a good word. On that note, Adina, we're going to get to <laughs> talk from you. You recently released uh, music that you recorded 25 years ago, I want the viewers to take a listen to a track from Welcome to Fantasy Island. I like. 
it was done in 97, 97. So right after, you know, Freak Like Me, the Do You Want to Ride album came out. So I kept on, you know, stayed on the path of, of being sexy, which, I, you know, as a Black woman, I think it's imperative that we feel sexy, that, you know, we recognize that we are desirable because the world on so many levels tells us that we're not. And um, I know that we are because I feel it within me at 25, at 47, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's really one of those things that I wanted to keep that theme going. And I like feeling sexy. I enjoy, you know, feeling myself, you know what I'm saying? And working it out and continuing to give the world some of that. Not That's not me 100% all the time because that would just be tiring. But to continue to, <laughs> right. but to continue to you know give that every now and again because we are beautiful, we are sexy. I mean, how can you not desire a black woman? Like I just don't understand it. That part. And before we go, I just want to mention Leela TV One is premiering your episode of Unsung on the twenty eighth. What can we expect? Oh well, um, you're gonna hear my story, part of it at least. I mean, you it, it's it's as much as it can be fitted <laughs> in the 60 minute um, um, time. But you, you're, I think you'll find a little more out about me, you know, so just, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it and continuing to support both of you, both beautiful, oh. talented, and, and thank you so much for being transparent and hanging out with me tonight. Thank I you. Appreciate Anytime. it so much.